Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome again to the new lecture of this course fundamentals and applications of dielectric ceramics. So let me briefly recap the previous lecture. So in the previous lecture we talked about uh, frequency dependence in real dielectrics. And there we said that you know you have uh, we defined dielectric properties in terms of complex behavior. So we defined this k kappa as kappa prime minus kappa double prime. So this is the real part and this is the imaginary part. So basically, this real part represents the charging current, and this imaginary part represents the loss current. So this has, so basically these are frequency dependent components. In addition, you will have frequency independent components, which is separate. And the ratio of these tan delta uh, is uh, kappa double prime minus kappa prime. You can also write this as epsilon r double prime divided by epsilon r prime. So the ratio of these two is tan delta. So for a lossy system, we will have high tan delta for a for a lossy system. Basically what it means is that if your system has high epsilon r double prime which means it has high frequency dependent loss current. So high epsilon r double prime will mean high frequency dependent loss current and what this would also mean is that your power loss will be will also increases will also increase. So, for dielectric materials, you have epsilon r double prime, which represents the actual uh, dielectric behavior, whereas epsilon r double prime represents the loss behavior of a dielectric. So, these are taking the frequency dependent parts into consideration. On top, you might also have ohmic losses. So, the total losses have to be cal calculated by combining ohmic losses plus the non ohmic frequency dependent losses. So, this is what we have done uh, in the last class, and we determined a framework to do that. Now, what we will look as look at is the uh, uh, frequency dependence at the microscopic scale. Frequency dependence okay. So, we saw that earlier your dielectric constant varies like this. So, you have frequency, uh, you can write f omega or f, then we have epsilon r, we will plot it as, now that we know it is a real and imaginary part, we will plot the real part, this is what we plot here as. So, initially we just plot the scalar part, but here we know that it said it is a real part. So, this varies in this fashion. like this. Okay. So, at high frequencies your dielectric constant is 1, at little bit lower frequencies your dielectric constant is epsilon r prime electronic, here it is epsilon r prime ionic this much and here it is anything on top of 1 is this and this becomes epsilon r prime dipolar and then we have interfacial right that is what we said earlier. Now we see some interesting features here, the interesting features are that at high frequencies when you transition from uh, 1 to epsilon r electronic there is a resonance kind of peak. What is the reason of this resonance? Similarly as you transition from electronic to ionic you see again a similar resonance kind of peak. These are the peaks also encountered in mechanical oscillators. When you have a resonance, you have these kind of resonance peaks. 
So, we will model this ionic and electronic polarization on the basis of basically harmonic oscillators. Okay. So, these, these are two we will call them at resonance peaks and we will see how they come about. And then when you go to lower frequencies you do not see resonance peaks as well, but what you see is a slow decay of the electric constant. This is called as a relaxation because here at the molecular level there are statistical events in response to time and basically uh, when you have electric field applied and when you have a certain frequency of it the dipoles as you go from lower to higher frequency or higher to lower frequencies they take time to align themselves in the direction of applied field and they are because this is because the dipoles are heavier they, they have certain you can say if you like you can call it friction in the. Uh, lattice and they have to go from one stable state to another stable state. So, as a result there is an energy barrier to be crossed or crossed. So, as a result they slowly relax from one position to another position and that is why it is a time taking process and this process is called as a relaxation. So, we will look at these three phenomena, we will not go into details of interfacial, we will, we will look at mainly dipolar uh, relaxation and uh, resonances related to harmonic uh, resonances related to ionic and electronic polarization considering uh, simple harmonic oscillator model. Okay. So, let us do that. So, um, let us say that, uh, so this is basically the first thing is the um, ionic and electronic um, polarization. at microscopic level. So, assume that, so first what we do is that we assume that the charge dipoles uh, behave like a linear harmonic oscillator. Okay, this is the assumption that we make to begin with. So, if they do that then we then they also follow the equation of motion. So, when we write now we have to write that what is the equation of motion in response to a force. Right? So, you have applied force as a result they will have certain acceleration, they will have a damping component and so on and so forth. So, let us say in this case the driving the, the, the force applied is basically you can say is due to applied electric field. Right? So, when we write now the, so which is equal to let us say q i e. So, this f is nothing but the q i e. So, q i e is the force applied this is equal to the mass of entity that is m i and so it, it could be electrons with respect to the nucleus or it could be ions in case of ionic polarization. So, this is basically mass of the particle you can say. mass of particles. So, it could be charges or ions. All right. So, mass multiplied by acceleration which is x double dot right? and this is equal to this is aided by m i star let us say. So, we write this as a star and uh, then we write m i to gamma i into d x by sorry. Uh, if I am just writing in the notation. So, then I write it as x dot and what is uh, this x, x. So, here we write x as a displacement from equilibrium. right? Okay. So, x double dot will mean basically acceleration or you can say 
this is d 2 x by d t square and the second thing that will happen is every system harmony oscillator will feel friction. So, as a result there will be a friction coefficient gamma which is gamma i and this is nothing but gamma i into m multiplied by velocity which is d x by d t. This is from classical mechanics and then we have another term which is uh, essentially m i star into omega o i square into x and the third term is basically if it is a simple harmonic oscillator where the charges are connected through a spring there will be a restoring force all right. So, there will be acceleration there will be a restoring force and there will be a damping. So, the so the so the first term basically is due to you can say this term is because of acceleration right. The second term is because of you can say damping or frictional force right and the third term is because of restoring force. So, essentially uh, this is nothing but k x. So, we have converted this into m omega square uh, x. So, here omega o i is the natural frequency of the particle. So, we can say omega not i or o i is natural frequency of the particle i. Okay. and x is the displacement. So, we can write this equation alternatively you can write this as q i e is equal to m i star into d 2 x by d t square plus m i gamma i into d x by d t plus m i star into omega naught i square into x. This is the equation of motion which will be in this, so you will have applied force in response to applied force you will have acceleration uh, every particle will feel acceleration and then you will have damping and you will have a restoring force because of the spring and that through which it is connected to which we assume. Okay. So, so this field is basically uh, the field that we actually apply that the, that, uh, that the molecule will feel. Uh, or the, the system will feel will be a local field that is there at, pre at present, but for the sake of simplicity and the local field in dielectrics could be slightly different as compared to the applied field, but for the sake of simplicity we will take it as a uh, applied field itself. So, we can assume that you have a system in which uh, uh, just like a gas in which there are n uh, atoms per unit volume and you consider them to be non interacting. So, if the, dielect if the dipoles were interacting then the field would be different but we assume that dipoles are not interacting and as a result uh, the field is same as applied field. So, we can say that system is non interacting system. So, as a result we will have local field which is same as applied field. Okay. So, now you consider two cases. So, the first case is uh, you apply a DC field and, and then switch it off at a given moment. Okay. What will happen? when you switch off the electric field which is DC the restoring forces will pull back the charges to equilibrium. So, basically you will have restoring forces they will establish equilibrium by pulling the charges back to their original positions and if there is no friction in the system there is no damping as a result there will be no damping of oscillations. And if you have friction in the system you will have damped oscillations. So, depending upon the depending upon on friction we will have damped oscillations or not. Okay. So, 
this is the case of DC field which is not very interesting because we are not interested in DC field and we know that in DC field um, uh, there is no frequency dependence there. So, we will have something like ohmic losses in the system. And now, second case that is there is when field is like this. So, when field is E is equal to E naught exponential of I omega t, it is a sinusoidally varying field. So, if you have field which is sinusoidally varying, then it is likely that the displacement will also vary sinusoidally. So, the x displacement is also expressed as x naught exponential of I omega t. So, if you ignore the transient terms, students who are more interested, they can go through the solution by themselves by substituting x is equal to x naught i omega exponential i omega t. But for the sake of simplification, for the sake of saving time, we just write the solution as x t will be equal to q i into e naught exponential of i omega t divided by m i star into omega naught i square minus omega square plus i gamma i omega. This will be the solution of the above equation that we have just written in the previous page. So, as assuming that field is sinusoidally varying, if field is sinusoidally varying, it is likely that the response will also be the similar. So, response is the displacement. So, displacement is also x is equal to exponential i omega t. If it has this form, then you substitute this in the above equation. Solve the equation, get the ignore the transient terms and you will get this kind of solution in for x. The x will vary as q i x e naught exponential i omega t divided by m i star into omega naught i square minus omega square plus i gamma i omega bracket closed. Okay. This will this is what you will observe. Now, what is the induced dipole moment if this is the case? The induced dipole moment mu i is equal to q i into x, right? Mu is equal to q d, right? So, this will be equal to now q i square into e naught exponential of i omega t divided by m i into omega i square minus omega square plus i gamma i omega bracket toast. Simple and this can be represented in the form and what is mu? Mu is equal to we know that mu is equal to alpha e the polarizability multiplied by electric field. So, what is it? Alpha i into exponential of alpha i into e naught into exponential of i omega t. So, this term what we have just derived here is basically the polarizability. So, this is alpha i of ith i kind of species is equal to q i square divided by m i into omega not i square minus omega square plus i gamma i omega. This could be electronic or ionic. The change will be in the charges, the charges will be different for electronic system and the ionic system and the mass. The mass will be higher for ionic system than for electronic system. As a result, the polarizability of ionic systems will be lower as compared to that of electronic systems. What you also have here is you have this term omega naught square minus omega square when omega will be equal to omega i for this corresponding. So, this omega o i will mean you will have either electronic, electronic or ionic. So, this is basically you can say is the characteristic frequency at which 
you will have an anomaly here. The term will go to infinity, right? If you if you know this term, the right term, this will go to infinity, and this is where the resonance will occur. So when your omega is equal to omega O i for electronic and for ionic polarization, that is where you will have resonance. So here you can consider m i could be either mass of you can say electrons this will be for ionic polarization uh, sorry electronic polarization right or it could be mass of ions for a ionic polarization system and generally for ionic polarization we consider what we say is reduced mass of the system which is given as uh, if you have a system as m plus m minus divided by m plus into m. So, essentially it is nothing but it is coming from 1 over m is equal to 1 over m plus plus 1 over m minus. Okay. So, m plus and m minus are cationic and ionic masses and similarly q i will be as appropriate that can be easily determined and this omega o i will be natural frequency of electronic or ionic polarization all right and this is why you see when you plot them you see so i'll come to the plots later on so let's write now the polarization what is the polarization going to be the polarization is nothing but n into mu i okay so this will be equal to and uh, so we know that we can just multiply by the number of dipoles so now we know that since here we have complex terms which means the uh, we we know that uh, susceptibility chi was equal to p divided by epsilon naught e now the susceptibility also becomes a complex quantity because your mu is complex quantity as a result your p is complex quantity as a result your chi will also be complex quantity so now if you now segregate the terms that is uh, so we use what we call as equations uh, let me just see let's go back to some previous equations yeah so basically similar equations so basically this is now this becomes chi and this chi so this is p star so this becomes chi star so this will become chi uh, prime minus i chi double prime right so similarly you will have to resolve the p into real numbers and complex numbers so when you do the resolution that you can do yourself that's a simple exercise so after resolving the real and imaginary so first we get the complex quantity itself the complex quantity is uh, chi star i we add a term in finite in finite is basically um, star means it's a complex quantity first of all so that is why we write polarization as a complex quantity in finite is a term which is written basically uh, these are the susceptibilities or dielectric constants below natural frequencies. So, natural frequency, uh, so we, since we will see we will have a resonance like this. So, when you measure them below the natural frequency, it means it is chi i infinity. Okay? So, that is a nomenclature thing, but so basically chi i infinity can be written as n into q i square divided by m i into epsilon naught into 1 divided by omega naught i square minus omega naught square plus i gamma i omega. This is simple right, it is nothing but p divided by epsilon naught e, the e e will cancel each other as a result we will have this term and from this we can determine epsilon r so we know that chi was equal to epsilon r star minus 1 so epsilon r star will be equal to 1 plus 
n into q i square divided by m i into 1 over omega o i square minus omega square plus i gamma i omega. All right. So, as it turns out that for electronic polarization, omega o i is of, of the order of 10 to the power 15 uh, second inverse or we can say hertz and for ionic polarization, so these are approximate numbers omega o i is approximately 10 to the power 13 hertz or so. Okay. And uh, you can see that for the calculation of susceptibility and electric constant, you have to use the frequencies which are lower than the natural frequency for electronic and um, polarization, assuming that this damping term will be very small, negligible. So, when you plot these, um, so from this, from this you can also determine what is epsilon r. So, this is equal to epsilon r prime minus i epsilon r double prime right epsilon r. So, now you have a i term here. So, what you will do is that you will separate these variables into a real and complex parts. When you do the separation into real and complex parts, you will find epsilon r infinity for ionic and electronic as n q i square divided by m i epsilon naught into omega i o i square minus omega square plus omega i square minus omega square to the power 2 plus gamma square omega square. Okay. And the real imaginary part will be n q i square divided by m i epsilon naught into gamma omega divided by omega naught i square minus omega square to the power 2 into gamma square omega square a simple separation of variables. Okay. So, when you plot this now what you will obtain is something like this when you plot the electric constant. So, this is epsilon r infinity okay. as a function of frequency we will see it goes we just expand it around this point, so this will be your omega naught electronic for example. Okay. So, this is for electronic similarly or it could be for omega naught ionic depending upon the masses and charges and when you plot epsilon r double prime infinity, we will see at this point system shows there will be a high loss. Okay. This is the reason why we see those resonances in the, uh, the electric constant plot. So, we will dwell upon this a little bit more in the next lecture, but what we have established is a simple framework to calculate the dielectric constant, the complex dielectric constant on a microscopic scale for electronic and ionic polarization. Okay. Thank you very much.